Back with another look at a meter that I bought recently on eBay. Uh, when I first saw it, obviously I saw that it was in English and went, that's quite interesting because it's an English meter, but it looks Soviet. And after a bit of research online, I discovered that it was indeed Soviet and it was made in the 1990s uh, at the Leningrad Electronic Instrument Assembly Shop Svetlana. Uh, obviously now in St. Petersburg. And this was the export model of the BGRAI-01, and obviously that stands for Beta Gamma Radiation Alarm Indicator. You can see there is no display on this. It is literally only to warn you about what the you know background radiation level is and uh, if that rises or if you're near a you know, an area where there is high radiation, it'll, you know, it'll go crazy. Very similar to the Polish RS-70 meter that I showed uh, in a video about, you know, two or three months ago. Uh, now, in Russia, this was sold as the Electronica, and uh, it was no different. There is a single um, STS-5 tube in this, SBM-20, and uh, as you can see with the holes drilled in the case here, uh, it will also detect uh, beta radiation. Obviously the case is not thick anyway, so you know, beta radiation would have got through here no problem at all. Turning it on, you can hear it, the humming noise as it turns on, and then every click then is a instance of uh, it detecting radiation. Now, the factory that made this uh, also made a pocket calculator, one of the first ever Soviet calculators, pocket calculators. And in fact, the case of this is the case of the Mark 33 calculator, except without the screen and the buttons. Uh, the power switch is the same. Uh, generally down here, there is a little uh, output or input for a charger. Uh, but yeah, this is the case for the Mark 33 calculator. And their main claim to fame is they made most of the electronic parts for the Sputnik satellite. So, Big, big, you know, Cold War claim to fame there by that factory. Uh, it takes three, uh, three volt batteries and they go, actually, the, which interesting enough, go in the top uh, rather than the bottom. It's usually in the bottom, you'll find it, but that's taken up by the uh, the tube. And uh, it runs for about 100 hours on, uh, on the three batteries. And I got it, I've had it for two or three days now, and it's very, very sensitive. Uh, in fact, what I'll do is, there's my sort of lowest level source of pitch blend. And I'll show you how it works with sort of a low level and a high level. So, you can see there, it's already starting, you know, we're, we're about 10 inches away there. And it's picking that up nicely. You know, if I go right down onto it. So, if you were to have this in your pocket, walking around an antiques fair, going to a car boot sale, something like that, they're in an antique shop itself. Uh, quite a handy little unit to have. Doesn't take up much space. It is ridiculously thin. In fact, it is actually thinner than the uh, the iPhone that I'm using to record this video. Uh, yeah, nice little unit. Now what I'll do is I will show it up against some Strontium 90. So I'll use two little ingots of Strontium 90. And you can see there, we're a good distance away. And then we're probably totally saturated there. But yeah, very, very nice. Works well. Uh, obviously, not having a display makes it really only an, aud you know, an audible warning. Uh, but still, I think if you were to use this with a meter that you don't want to switch on all the time, you know, something like the radio scan, for instance, you want to keep that in the jacket pocket, walk about with this in your pocket and every so often take it out to check something quickly. Yeah, works quite nicely. Uh, yeah, another unit for my <laughs> ever growing collection of meters and uh, I have more on the way. But listen, as always, thank you very, very much for watching and uh, I'll see you all again next time. Bye bye.